Hi everyone, my name is Nick and I'm going to be sharing some tips, advice, and guidance on how to address and correct homework avoidance. So this is a topic that's relevant for all students and parents, whether your child's enrolled in an AP or honors curriculum, or if they're on an individualized education plan, homework avoidance does not discriminate by any age group or skill level. So the idea is to never allow the pattern or habit to occur, and when it does, to break that cycle. Unfortunately, for so many of us, so many of our students and children, they're already heavily and deeply ingrained in that negative cycle, and we just can't seem to pull them out of it. But don't worry, there's definitely plenty of ways where, for you to address and eventually to break free from those cycles over time, and I'm going to be sharing them with you today. Two things I want you to keep in mind as I go through some of the solutions and some of the strategies are positivity and process. Number one, you want to be thinking in each stage that we go through here, how can I associate positivity with homework for my child as much as possible and avoid negativity as much as possible? Number two, understand this is going to be a process. It's going to take time. Nothing is going to get fixed overnight. So hopping right into our agenda, I'll be speaking about motivation first. What are some of the causes of homework avoidance? Number two, monitoring and helping to manage stress levels. Number three, actual solutions. What can we do? Addressing individual challenges requires unique solutions. And then four, I'll close up with some closing remarks. So let's jump right in. Motivation, identifying the root cause of avoidance. You need to ultimately answer, where is the resistance coming from? Remember, the age and grade level of the student have a great deal of significance in your approach and ultimately how you even understand what's going on with them. You know, a second, third, fourth grader, the reasons for avoiding homework are going to be a lot different than a ninth, tenth, eleventh grader most of the time, the specific reasons behind that. So again, why are they avoiding the homework in the first place? And we need to understand the specific reason in order to adequately address the problem. Once you've identified the problem, then you'll know how to better tackle the issue and where to go from there. I've summed it up into four categories for reasons students avoid homework. Forgetfulness, struggle with a specific subject matter, behavior and maturity, and time management. And the last two are very closely related. So there's tools and there's ways to help manage each of these problems, and I'll get into the, each specific one, and for each one, I'll discuss a solution. So monitoring stress levels. Kids don't want to do things that they find stressful. They just avoid it. If we really think about it, it's a pretty natural human behavior. You know, when something is new, confusing, hard to understand, and it frustrates us, we tend to avoid it. And our kids are no different. They're already avoiding it because they're stressed. So we need to ask, how can we help manage and decrease the stress level rather than increase it? What can we provide that can remove that stress? Again, if we identify the root cause of the stress, we'll be better equipped to find the right solution for it. What is causing it? Where is it coming from? Is it a lack of confidence in general that this individual child struggles with? Is it a tendency to become overwhelmed by homework and schoolwork? Or is it a genuine, genuine difficulty to engage with specific types of subject matter? We need to identify which one it is before we can build a solution for it. So one, one way to address that is to establish an open dialogue with your teachers you know, about your child so that you can receive another perspective and be receiving the perspective of another pair of eyes to help track and support their development. Even if you don't really like the teacher or if you don't care for their opinion, which happens all of the time, their observations and the facts surrounding how your kid is spending their time in school are going to be of a great benefit to you when you're building a solution for homework avoidance. You know, understanding how your child is behaving in school versus how they're behaving at home is going to give you a lot of valuable insight. And taking it a step further, how your child behaves in a math class versus how they behave in an English or a science or you know, otherwise, that's going to give you valuable insight as well. So knowing that is, is some of the first steps that you need to take. 
And you know, the answer and the solutions to each of these problems are going to be different. So that's why it's really essential to understand the why before you jump in and create a solution. So solutions, you know, what can we do? What can we do to help each different scenario that we mentioned? So let's start with forgetfulness. Start with an easy one. Kids are forgetful. You know, it's not uncommon for a student who has a class at 10 or 11 a.m. in the morning to go through a full day, have lunch, maybe even recess, have a bus or, or car ride home, they get back, they get settled, and they sit down to do their homework, and they completely forget the details and the nuances of the approach that the teacher wanted them to take on that assignment. It happens. You know, fortunately, there are a ton of resources that can help us get around that, and especially in a time of a pandemic, the digital resources that are available are now becoming ingrained with our educational institutions. So you need to understand what technologies your school has that help that can help your kid to keep track of a what they they have done and what they haven't, and b what they're supposed to be doing, what the specific directions are for the assignment. Have them be checking it frequently and checking it constantly. And if you want to take it a step further. Understand the technologies that the school has and what technologies they don't have, what technologies other schools have, what technologies you can go out and seek on your own time. Um, the second part of, the, of forgetfulness is it's also an opportunity to address and reinforce both note-taking and participation. Encourage them to take notes when teachers are giving assignments out and encourage them to ask questions. Encourage them to ask the teacher, teacher to repeat the assignment. Encourage them to participate to help their engagement and help their understanding. So subject struggles. So when a student struggles with a specific subject, it is a different problem in and of itself. You know, kids don't like things that they're not good at. And confidence is key to engagement. It's way too easy for kids to get sucked into this psychological trap of, you know, this is, this is above my level. You know, I can't get there. The other kids are there for, you know, English and math, but, you know, I'm there for science, but maybe not English. You know, we, we need to help them see that you can get there. It just requires effort. And furthermore, we need to show them and set an example of what that effort looks like. Right? If they, if they hate something during class, they're not going to be able to do it by themselves at home. You have to sit with them and help them through the subjects that they struggle with. If, if they're not good at it, you can't force them to do it by themselves and then expect them to come out with something that's great. It's just not going to happen. You need to engage them in conversation about it, which means you need to read the chapter. You need to read the book. You need to be able to speak with them about it. Break the task into smaller pieces if it's something that's very overwhelming to them. You know, incentivize them with rewards in between if they're a younger child. If they do X, Y, and Z for 30 minutes, they get 30 minutes of video games, so on. It's, it's just important to ensure that their level of engagement with the subject matter is where it needs to be. So another big part of that is a lot of parents don't have the time to sit down with their kid and bring them through the subjects that they struggle with. But there's definitely ways around that. And if they have a sibling, that's the first place I would go. If they have a sibling that can help them out with it, encourage them to work together and have them working through it. If there's a neighbor or a close family friend or a, a teacher that you're close with or someone that's willing to go over and do it, have them do it. Have them sit down with them for an hour, hour and a half, two hours, whatever it takes for them to get to that level of engagement. You know, sort of a last uh, resort would be hiring a private tutor or hiring a teacher to come after school and work on the subject addition, with additional hours with them. But that's sort of the last resort. The point is that you need someone there to help guide them through and help work them through the subjects that they have a hard time with. So last but not least, we have behavioral slash maturity management and also time management, which is directly connected. So is it just a maturity and an apathy issue? You know, we need to be able to identify that because the solution and the approach is, is going to be, and, and the root of the problem is going to be way different from someone who's struggling with their math or forgets um, you know, the teacher's assignment because they're trying to take too detailed of notes. This is a completely different issues. So for these type of issues, we need to implement more structure. Time management. Get them into a routine. Establish some consistency. If we expect it out of them, we need to set a clear example of what it is and what doing it successfully looks like. Set clear expectations of what needs to be done and when. So we need to ask, 
And, you know, what goes on at home? I mean, do you know what's happening 30 minutes to 30 minutes? Pro probably not. We're not home enough to know that. <coughs> Excuse me. So we need to think about what we can control and how we can set them up for success. You know, how are we doing that? How are we setting them up for success? You know, what steps are we taking? What's going on when they're trying to do their homework? Can we monitor those situations or can we at least help to limit the amount of distractions that are going on when they're doing their homework? Not everyone can be physically there when, parent, when students are working on their homework, but there are things that are in our control that we can affect. We can affect the work environment and the location that they do their homework at. We can set expectations and we can aid in preparation. We can also consistently be supportive and encouraging. We can set a clear understanding for them of what school time is versus what other time is. You know, it's important for them, it's important for us to make sure that kids understand that there's a time for school and there's not. And we need to also label what and when that time is. You know, is it an hour after they get back from school? Is it immediately when they get back from school? We need to understand what works for that student. Maybe they need to eat a snack and they need to, to fuel up before they go and use their brain or they'll be cranky and they won't engage with the material. We need to help them prepare. We need to help them have the right preparation. So that also means a quiet, distraction-free space with a desk and all the, the appropriate and necessary resources for all their subjects calculators, textbooks, notebooks. We need to help them make sure that they have that stuff there so that they can engage with it in the first place. Otherwise, we need to hold them accountable. So again, do they clearly understand when is school time, when is not, and reducing distractions? All of these are going to help. We, you know, we want to be supporting and setting our kids up for academic success from every single angle possible. You know, we want to be sure to ask ourselves, you know, what we've been doing to ensure that these things happen. And if something's not working, we need to understand why and how we can change and adapt our approach so that it can be successful. So now just some closing remarks, some, some things that, I, that I'll finish up with that I, that I want to emphasize. You know, we really need to think deeply at, about how we can help. You know, what we can do to support our children and students and, and aid in their development. We need to analyze and understand our own actions and whether our impact is positive or negative. You know, if one approach isn't working, we need to be able to realize that it's not working. And we need to you know, adjust and experiment with new approaches and new ways to engage with our kids. It's a continuous process and we have to commit ourselves to it and set the example of what success looks like. Confidence is another thing I want to reiterate. It's so important and we need to always be conscious of it and we, you know, we need to be conscious as to whether we're building confidence or we're enabling arrogance or even worse, creating insecurities. Academic development is so much more than just academics. For our kids and for our students to respect us, we really need to respect them and make an effort to understand them and approach them as the unique individuals that they are. Lastly, be mindful that nothing simply happens overnight. Nothing improves significantly in one sitting. Tackling homework avoidance is an initiative that requires constant monitoring and attention. It's constant monitoring and attention of skills, of confidence, stress, time management, and consistent accountability from students. Thank you guys so much for listening. Hope you have a great rest of your day.